we will record this meeting and it will be placed on our um our on our page so that you can go back and refer to um anything during this presentation So tonight we're going to discuss what is read by grade three. Um, we're going to um, talk a little bit about the measurement of reading performance. What is an individualized reading improvement plan? Uh, what do you need to know as a parent? Um, how can you support your child at home? And some important milestones. And then we're going to answer um, any questions that you may have. So, um, like Dr. Green mentioned earlier, in 2016, the Michigan legislator um, passed a law, um, the Read by Grade 3 law, that requires schools to identify learners who are struggling with reading and writing and to provide additional help. The law states that third graders may report, repeat third grade if they are more than one grade level behind. Um, beginning with the 2019-2020 school year. In the 2019-2020 school year, the law was um, put on hold due to COVID. Um, last year, um, being that many of our school districts were still virtual, um, we did get a good cause exemption, and I'm going to talk about what that is and what that looks like as well. And as a parent, what you need to do um, if you would like to um, activate a good cause exemption. So the measurement of reading performance, um, as you all may be aware, we use, utilize two measurements. Our benchmark assessment is our iReady assessment, and we give iReady three times a year. So we do it in the beginning of the year, which all of our students have already taken the iReady assessment. When we come back from uh, winter break, um, our window opens again on January 10th and it goes to February 11th, and then we will um, take the assessment again um, in May, and it goes from May 3rd, I believe, to June 11th, no, June 4th, sorry. And so that's our universal screener. That's what we utilize to see if our students are having some difficulty in reading. Um, as well as all of our K-3 students um, take the Michigan Literacy Progress Profile Assessment. And that's a one-on-one -on -one assessment that each teacher um, gives that student. And so um, once a student masters the concepts in the Michigan Literacy Profile uh, or otherwise known as the MOPP assessment, then the teacher does not have to give the assessment again. Um, but the students have to master each um, section of the MLPP before the teacher um, does not have to give your students that assessment again. And that's only for our K-3 students. Um, and again, the law also states that um, they have some reporting requirements. And so by law, we have to report um, how your students are doing on our universal screener, which is our iReady assessment. And so all the families should have received the family report already. Um, if you have not received that report, please reach out to your um, child's teacher and or the principal and they can do a copy of that report so that you can see where your students are on the iReady assessment. So what is an individual plan? And we call it an iRIP. Um, and so you may be asking yourself, what is an iRIP? So it is a plan um, that is created to for K-3 students exhibiting a reading deficiency. The plan is created within 30 days of identifying the deficiency. It's for K-3 students uh, who perform below reading, the reading benchmark. And it's also outlined school-based and home-based strategies that we can utilize to help our students with their reading deficiency. And so retention, grade three students will take the ELA M-STEP assessment in spring of 2022, and it starts in April. And so when we um, come back from spring break, um, we usually have about a week or so, and then we go into all spring um, state standardized testing. And so um, all of the third grade students will take the M-STEP. Um, if the score is a 1252 or lower, Parents will receive a notification from the Michigan Department of Education, as well from Southfield Public Schools, that your students may be retained. 
Parents and guardians not wanting their child retained can request good cause exemption from the school district within 30 days of your notification. So you really have to um, pay attention as to when you get your notification in the mail because you have 30 days to, to um, put in a request for a good cause exemption. You have to, um, the district, you will put in your good cause exemption from to your school district. So for your principal or to your teacher, and you'll let them know that you would like to activate a good cause exemption. Your school district has 30 days prior to the start of school to give you your decision as far as if a good cause exemption will be activated. And what that is, is, is stating that you do not, you do not agree with retaining your child, you want your child to move forth to the fourth grade, um, and then the district will look at all of your, um, your data and make a decision. The decision is made um, by school officials, so the superintendent and or her, her designee will have the final decision as far as um, if a good cause exemption will be activated. Um, a student may also qualify for a good cause exemption if the student has a IEP or individualized education plan or a 504 plan. Um, if the student has been previously retained and received intensive reading intervention for two or more years um, and still exhibiting a reading deficiency, then the parent can um, qualify for a good cause exemption. Also, if, you, if your student has been enrolled in your current school for less than two years, and did not have an IRIP at the previous school, then a good cause exemption can be activated. And so these are the, the um, ways in which a parent can, um, a, a way the parent can um, activate a good cause exemption if they do not want their child to be retained in the third grade. So what will happen is um, you request a meeting um, with the principal and the teacher, and then you will file a good cause exemption within the 30 day um, of receiving your notification. And again, your child's school needs to have a decision for you within 30 days before the first day of school. Um, and again, like I said before, the superintendent and or her designee will make the final decision. So you may be asking yourself, what are some things that I can do at home to help my students um, with reading? And so um, the one thing is your child received an IRIP, your child should also receive a booklet of help that you can do at home. If you did not receive that booklet, please um, reach out to your child's teacher and they can get you that booklet so that you can do some of those activities at home. Um, also, commit to reading with your child 20 minutes every night um, and discuss any unknown vocabulary. Half the battle in reading is vocabulary. And so if they understand the vocabulary, they can probably they can understand and comprehend what's going on in the stories with the end stuff as well. So, you know, as you are reading with your child every night for 20 minutes, you know, check to see if they're understanding what they read, but also check to see if they understand the vocabulary that is in um, the reading in which you guys um, selected. And as well, make sure that your child is doing six minutes a week of iReady reading every week. So not 60 minutes a day, but 60 minutes a week. So that's, that is approximately 10 minutes a day. If they work on their learning plan on uh, iReady 10 minutes to, a day, that can assist with um, increasing their reading um, proficiency. important milestones that you need to be aware of. You may say, well, how did my child um, qualify for IRIP? And so these are some examples of um, what you receive if your child did receive an IRIP. So in the fall, this is an example of on the left -hand side, a kindergarten milestones, and on the right is an example of third grade milestones. So for anyone in kindergarten that scores 314 or lower on the um, iReady reading that flagged them for an iRIP. If you want your child to come off of the iRIP, they have to score in the winter a 338 or higher um, because as, as we're going along, the scores are getting um, higher because we are learning more content. 
um, as we are going along in the um, actual school year. As well, um, if they, if you want your child to come up an IRIB, not only do they have to score the benchmark on the I-Ready assessment, but they also have to score the benchmark on the MLPP assessment. And we also added the benchmarks on the actual IRIB, so you'll be able to see um, what they need to score. Sorry, let me go back. So as you can see on the left hand side is the kindergarten milestone. And then on the right hand side, I put an example of the third grade milestone. So for third grade, for any student that scored below a 483 in reading, that flagged them for an IRIP. And the same as um, first grade and second grade has their own milestones as well. First grade is a 383 and um, second grade is a 451 for the fall. And so when you're looking at your IRIPs, just pay attention to the benchmark so you can see um, what, your, what your child has to score. And, and also it should have their actual scores in there as well. So you can see where, where they're scoring at currently. So that's some of the information that we wanted to share with you tonight. Um, I know you may have questions, but the, the main thing is that we want to um, bring it to your attention um, of what is read by grade three, what we're doing also as a district. And so in kindergarten through third grade, we have um, Title I teachers or interventionists that's working with our, um, our IRIP students, as well as we have literacy coaches that's working with our teachers um, to strengthen some of the um, strategies so that we can can increase um, our student scores. We do understand that we have learning loss um, due to COVID and we're working on that as well, but we do just want to give um, the information to all of the families so that you are aware where we are in this process. Um, every time we take the iReady assessment, um, students will be uh, receiving either a new iRIP um, so you, you'll get an updated IRIP for your students, or you may get an exit letter saying that your students uh, have done so well um, that they we are removing the IRIP, removing them from an IRIP. And so those are some things that you will be receiving throughout the year. Um, Jessica, um, would you like to ask any questions that may be in the question and answer session? Okay, so our first question is, will there be any opportunity for one-on-one -on -one coaching sometime during the school day? So again, students um, see, um, if students are on the IRIP, they will see the Title I um, teacher. And some students do see Title I teachers one-on-one, -on -one, but they tend to see students in a small group. So it's not 30 kids at a time. They usually see kids in a group of five to seven kids and they're working on the same skill sets. So the next question is, the kids just went through an entire year of online schooling due to COVID. Is, there, is this being a concern why students could be struggling or ongoing now? So uh, across the whole United States of America, there is learning loss. We, we have data for that. And, and on top of that in Michigan and in Southfield Public Schools as well. And so we are um, working and doing some strategies to try to increase our students, um, you know, because we do understand that they, they was online for more than half of the year. However, this is the law and we do have to abide by the law. So the law states that we have to give our kids a screener, and then if they do not score at a certain um, score, then we have to put them on an individualized reading improvement plan. But as a parent, there are some things that you can do as well to make sure that, you know, you that if you still don't attention, just making sure that you are aware that you have the good cause exemption and just making sure that you are aware of the notification and keeping up with the timelines because that's very important. Just Last year, over, I just want um, before you before you said one, I want to add one more thing. Last year, there were letters that were sent to parents, um, even though the assessment wasn't mandatory um, last year for um, the third grade. We did give the M, the um, M step in the Michigan Department of Education did send out letters to parents stating that the 
be um, retained. However, Dr. Green did a good cause exemption for the entire district because we were in COVID. And so there, there are some um, opportunities um, to, to help our students, but you, you do have some rights as a parent to activate that as well. So one of these questions is a follow-up, so I'll answer that. So is the um, coaching ongoing now? So our interventionists are working with students one-on-one -on -one now, but they work in cycles. So if your student is not seeing the interventionist per se right now, they will be during the school year. So they are working with students. Um, we all are aware of our IRIP students. So they are um, building their schedule to work with your children. Um, also, I would like to uh, remind parents that this um, meeting is recorded and it will be on our website. So if you missed any information, it will be on the website. And our next question is, will the IRIP communication to parents be via email or will students come home with the information? Students should have come home with the IRIP in their backpacks. Um, teachers um, between last week and this week was sending home the IRIP. So you should have received it um, if you've already, if your, your student is on an IRIP, you should have received your IRIP already. Um, if you're not sure if your student's on the IRIP and you're not sure if they brought it home, please reach out to your student's homeroom teacher. They will know and they can guide you through this. I saw that our district received some funding recently. Can some of those funds be used for reading camps or reading programs offered by universities, et cetera? So um, that would be we that would be more of a a short answer, yes. Some of those funds will be used to address learning loss. Um, and so we are in the um, aspect now of building some of those programs. Please look out for our summer school program. We do have some um, some bridge programs that we're looking to activate during the summer. So yes, we, we will have some things um, for students that is experiencing some difficulty um, coming soon. I have a parent asking if they can request their child to work with one of our interventionists. So um, you can request it at your school, but depending on what their their Absolutely. it depends on what their data is. If they're an IRIP student, then they will be working with the interventionist. If they're not an IRIP student, then they may not work with the interventionist. It just really depends on how big is the interventionist caseload is, because um, each um, K five and K eight school has one. Um, the next question is, and I don't know, I can pull it up. Um, can you, do you know offhand by summer if the benchmarks for first grade? So what are the benchmarks for fall, winter, and spring? So let me, I, I will have to pull that up. I don't have it right now, but if you are, if your child is on an IRIP, it's on your IRIP. Um, but I can pull it up before, I can try to pull it up before we get off of here. Um, the, First grade for I ready, I do know is 383, I believe. Um, but I'm gonna look it up. And if I don't look it up, I'm sure Jessica can look it up and let you know. But there's also benchmarks, not just with I ready, there's also benchmarks with the MLPP. And so in order for them to come off, not only do they have to make the benchmark with I ready, they have to make all of the benchmarks with MLPP. If they don't do both, then they don't come off. And that's not, again, a Southfield Public Schools rule. That is a, that's the law. Is there going to be some type of tutoring offer or some tutoring outreach options given to Absolutely. So, first of all, I, I want you to check with your school to see if they have some tutoring options. Um, um, at your school, your individual schools. I do know that we're working currently to um, offer some, some, maybe some virtual tutoring. The thing is, um, keep in mind that there's a labor shortage across the country. And so we have to make sure that we have the staff to staff those tutoring programs. And so we, we're working on that as we speak, but I know some schools have already started their tutoring program. 
And I know some schools are scheduled to start when we come back from the break. Summer, I'm sorry. I'm trying to unmute Dr. Green. Okay. Is she a panelist? No, she's back to attending. Okay. So let me look. Let me move her up. Okay. Dr. Green, you can unmute yourself. Oh, thank you so much. I was struggling. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to <laughs> Ladies, you're doing a great job, but I, I wanted to address some of the things that were lifted. Mm -hmm. One, in regard to the plans that students have access to their individualized plans. Families have access to those every day, 24 hours a day, seven days per week. You don't have to do the minimum 10 minutes per day. You don't have to wait Monday through Friday. You can exercise that every day, all day. That gives you immediate information. You also get immediate information through your parent portal when the students do take the test. So you don't have to wait for the IRIP to come home in the backpack because parents have access to all of our student data as soon as possible, and I'm a little winded because I was running to try to get to the computer <laughs> when I could uh, unmute, so bear with me. The other piece is um, in regard to volunteers, tutors, camps. We provide everything that we possibly can to support our students and our families. So don't think that there's a one size fits all. We had summer school this past summer. We will have it again this summer. These upcoming two weeks, Please use that to your advantage. Reading does not occur in a vacuum. There are words around us everywhere we go every day. Utilize those opportunities to discuss the vocabulary that you see. You see on billboards, you see um, in, in books around your home, your literature rich environments. Have conversations with your children about those items and help build their vocabulary. We're also working with some external volunteer groups to ensure that we get support for our students, but we are leveraging every option available to us to support our young people. That's all ladies, thank you. Dr. Green. Thank you, Dr. Green. Are there any other questions, um, Jessica? Can you go do me a favor and go over um, good cause exemptions again. Absolutely, let me pull it up. So, here, right here. But a student may qualify for a good cause exemption if they have an IEP or 504, they've been previously retained already, and they've received intensive reading intervention for two or more years and still exhibiting a reading deficiency. If they're enrolled in their current school for less than two years and did not have an IRIP at their previous school, um, the student's parent slash legal guardian does not, um, does not agree with the following, you will have to uh, put in a request with your school 30 days within receiving your notification. Um, and your child schools will have a decision um, 30 days before the first day of school. And again, the superintendent um, and or um, her designee will make the final decision. So going back. And some, I can jump in yeah. on that. The reason mm -hmm. it states 30 days before school starts because we never know the exact date that the letters are coming from the Michigan Department of Education. So again, we are at uh, their disposal when it comes to the notifications to our families and they go directly to our families. So unfortunately, we don't get a list prior to. If we did, we would have those conversations with you. We have some preliminary data from the iReady results and we're able to share that with our families, but it's actually the state standardized test that will be the trigger for them to send that letter. Therefore, uh, we need to make sure that we're all in sync with our dates. Someone said, what is the 504 plan? I just saw that pop up on my phone. So I'll go ahead and take that. 
A 504 mm -hmm. plan is a plan designed for students uh, most often with health challenges. And if they have some health challenges that would cause them to miss school or to uh, require accommodations to their learning style, we would develop those plans with the students. So it's different from an individualized education plan, also referred to as an IEP, for students that need more intense services. Generally, the 504 covers anything that would be health related. Thank you, Dr. Green. Are there any other questions, um, Jessica? Yes, um, if I go to the link, will it assist me on how to properly fill out the blanks in the IRIP? So I will answer that, Summer. The IRIP is generated through the data that we collect from your child. So you don't have to fill out anything from the link that was given. The link that was given is just notification that you have received the IRIP and you don't have to agree with it. We just want to make sure that we, as a, um, the parent and or, and or guardian, have received the IRIP from your teacher, your child's teacher. And if you have any questions, you can put it in there as well, and we'll reach out to you um, to answer all your questions. So, one of the questions is, where exactly is the um, IRIP located every day? And will they be provided after we return back from break? So the IRIP was given to your, if your child was on the IRIP, the IRIP was a piece of paper or when or email from your teacher, um, you should have received it. And then those IRIPs are updated once we take a standardized test and that happens in the fall, winter or summer and, and summer, excuse me. Do we have any more questions? I don't see any more. And I will go back because I did look up the I um, ready cut scores for first grade for the fall is a 383. And for the winter is a 408. And then for the spring is 434. And ladies, um, I also wanted to share, while parents may not have questions now, this is a lot of information to digest. And we recognize that you may have a plethora of questions after the fact, and you want to know how to get in touch with these ladies. These ladies are always accessible via email. Your school principals are available to you. Your classroom teacher is always your first line of defense. And if you don't receive a response from any of those three layers of the organization, you can always email me and I will make sure they get back in touch with you. But know that you are not in this alone. It is our goal to have every student in Southfield Public Schools not only proficient in reading, but surpassing their grade level in reading. So please do not think that you are getting this information and we are expecting you to do everything in isolation. We are here as your partner, and as we get resources, we will get them in your hands as quickly as possible. But if there is something that you need, we also ask that you communicate with us on a regular basis to ensure that we are providing you with the necessary materials. Absolutely, and I'm going to display our email addresses um, so that if you have any additional questions, you can, um, you can email us and Jessica and myself, and we will be happy to answer any other questions that you may have. And additionally, we will be having more of these meetings. Um, and so we will be having another meeting um, to go over more um, information in March. Let me um, show, share my screen so you can get them, get our um, contact information. So this is my email and um, Jessica Hines email. And so if you think of any questions um, after this presentation, please feel free to email us and we will definitely get back with you um, as, as soon as possible to answer any of your questions. This last question um, goes with what Dr. Green was saying. 
Will doing the different activities or exercises offered in the package help um, our students with the MLPP in the winter? So absolutely. I don't know if you wanted me to answer that because oh, you no. said going along with what Dr. Green stated, it definitely helps. And and honestly, several of your scholars have already advanced. When we first tested with MLPP and iReady at the beginning of the year, they had just returned to a quote unquote normal school year. However, they had made significant progress by being back in the classroom with their master level teachers and with their classmates. That said, we still have a tremendous amount of work to do. So everything that we possibly can do to help them advance is going to benefit them not simply for a standardized test, because our goal is never to teach to the test. Our goal is to ensure that our scholars are at their absolute maximum performance. So don't view this as getting them to a point where they can pass a test. We want to prepare them for the life, for life. Absolutely. And then also, I would like to add, like, when you're doing the activities, don't see it as a task. Do it as something that you do just to interact with your students or your children. So while you're in the car, or if you see some uh, a different vocabulary while you're driving, discuss the vocabulary word with your students. Make it an everyday activity. We don't want our kids to feel like they're being punished because they're not. I just, you know, we want them to make sure that they're selling and seeing learning as fun. So anything we can do as parents to make it learning fun, that's what helps kids in the long run in the classroom. So while you're in the car, do the activities, just discuss um, a book that they read, see if they can recall those events that happened. And just, you know, while you're eating dinner, Let's have those conversations just so kids can see the joy of learning and not seeing it as a task. Absolutely. So thank you so much, um, Jessica. Thank you so much, Dr. Green. Um, if you have any more questions, you can definitely reach out to myself or Jessica and we will be able to answer your questions. Um, also, you can reach out to your teachers. They're very versed in, in IRIPS as well and your building principles. Thanks again for attending tonight. Have a great evening. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.